Uh, it's great to see you this morning. Please excuse the shoulders. I've just got back, from, well, been at the gym and Karen's got a little event on today, so I've been running around doing that. So um, coming in just a little bit late, 20 past 11 today. And uh, Karen, yes, I've been on, I've been at the gym, came back, Morrison's, put a gazebo up in the garden, grated the cheese. And I said to Karen, she's making scones for the high tea this afternoon. And um, aren't you in Rwanda, your lips are licking your lips? Would have been tea and scones or scones cream, strawberries and all that kind of stuff. So um, anyway, so that's not helping me with the devotion, is it? So we're continuing the devotion in the book <coughs> of Galatians, chapter 3. You remember I skipped a couple of verses and then I went into verse 19 yesterday. And verse 20 in chapter 3 says this. Now a mediator is helpful if more than one party must reach an agreement. But God, who is one, did not use a mediator when he gave his promise to Abraham. So if you have conflict, um, things or sometimes marriages, they go to mediation or things with unions and, and, and employers and employees, they go to mediators, to so someone who can, you know, who can speak on the other's behalf and kind of try and uh, bring about to, re to bring a negotiation. Now, when we fall out with one another and, you know, Brothers and sisters, and uh, you know, we do. Uh, in my family, um, we were a very happy family when we lived in, when we lived in Kent with my brother and, and uh, my sister and everything. But on the odd occasion, and it was an odd occasion, I was really close to my brother, we did fall out. We exchanged a couple of punches, a punch on the nose once or twice. And um, uh, because because you do fall out, because you we, when you're close and you, that, yeah, you, you kind of get sorted out. But you sort things out. Sometimes we need other people to help us. And the Bible talks about this, you know, it says if, if someone sins against you, uh, you know, go and see them. And if they don't listen, then take someone, uh, you know, if you like a mediator, take someone along as a witness, a mediator. So we use them in all kinds of different ways. And, um, you know, so, you know, and also just, to, just saying about when we do, if we do fall out with somebody and stuff, do you know what? Sometimes, sometimes we think, "Oh, I've got to, I've got to go and sort this out. I've got to go and deal with this with this person." Actually, sometimes, you know what? Do you know what? We don't really need to. We can just, if we can just, if we can just deal with it ourselves, and just say, "Like, okay, you know, put that, put the past behind us." You know, because we're all human. We all make mistakes. We say things we're wrong sometimes. We think things wrong. We make mistakes sometimes. We get up and we're, you know, we are in a bad mood. We're in a plain bad mood and. It's, you know, I'm having a bad day. You know, and we don't need to deal with everything. If, if you can deal with it yourself, why don't you just deal with it and let it go? That's what Jesus did on the cross, didn't he? He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they're doing. And they brutally murdered him, if you like, on the cross. Although they had the law behind them, it was kind of, it was a jumped up, you know, court. And even, it, it, you know, it was swayed. So Jesus did that. So, but if you do feel you need to to um, to uh, um, deal with it, deal with it gently, with full of grace, and um, not like a lot of employers and unions. In, in, when I was growing up in in the days of of the cult with coal miners, it was like it was very aggressive. We don't need to be doing that. But so there we go. Mediation. If more than one, if you need to reach an agreement, sometimes you need that mediator. But God, who is one, so there's one God. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. They did not use a, a mediator. God did not use a mediator. God who is one. Three persons in one. <coughs> Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Um, they have their one, one God. And each has a different role, different purpose. God the Father sits on the throne. Jesus came to the earth. He was the Word, was at the beginning. He spoke and the world came into being. The Holy Spirit was there brooding. It says brooding over the waters. And the Holy Spirit... It is everywhere all of the time and comes and, and also comes and lives within us and strengthens us and helps us. Uh, so, but God, who is one, did not use a mediator when he gave his promise to Abraham. He gave his promise to Abraham. And I think probably what it's talking about there in those days was actually if you made a promise before someone, you had made it before witnesses. Um, but God is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. God always keeps his promises. God keeps his promises. And there were witnesses. There was the Son, 
and there was the Holy Spirit there to witness the, the, the promise that God gave to Abraham. And not only does that, you know, that was fantastic that God gives us promises, God and God is there, he, he oversees that, <clears throat> oversees the promises. All God's promises, the Bible says, are yes and amen. If God said something to you, guess what? He's going to do it. He will keep his word because God is good and he is faithful. If anyone is faithful in this world, men and women are not faithful. We are not faithful because, you know, it, things depend on how we feel at times. And we think like, well, they did this to me, so I'm not, I'm not going to do that now. Regardless of that, God is faithful. God keeps his promises. We can see that God has kept his promise to Abraham that through, the, through his seed, the whole world will be blessed. And, you know, Jesus has impacted the whole world, even in all the major all world religions, even in even in, in the, the Muslim faith. Jesus, although they don't recognise him as the son of God, they recognise him as the prophet or a prophet. Uh, so and so it's so, you know, uh, so God keeps his promises. God is there. God kept his promise to Abraham. God will keep his promise. I lost my way for a second there. God will keep his promises to you. Do you know that today, maybe you're waiting on a promise from God. Why don't you dust it down, have a look at it, pray into it. Pray into the promise. Oops. Pray into the promise that God has given you. Say, so Lord, I'm not seeing that right now, but Lord, why don't you help me to see that promise? If there's anything in me that needs to change, Lord, change me so that I can be in the right place to receive your promise. Remind God, remind God of his promise. And God is good, he's true, he is faithful. He hears our prayers. Sometimes we need to do something in us to change so that we can put ourselves in a position so that we are in the right place to receive that promise. Sometimes it's just about timing. You know, it's just not the right time just now. And we are very impatient, aren't we? But God, let me leave you with this thought today. God is faithful. God always keeps his promises. The one I love particularly is I will never leave you nor forsake you. So I'll leave that with you today. And take care. God bless. See you again tomorrow in Jesus' name. Amen. I might have something on my shoulders tomorrow. So, uh, so there we go. Take care. God bless. Amen.